heads at the meeting about him. Um, and it was amazing because a lot of African heads of state were there and they were all just talking about him, condolences, and everyone who spoke was starting with condolences. Mm. And of course I had to then leave to go to Addis because we also had to do a memorial there uh, for him together with the ambassador of South Africa and the Ethiopians. So it was quite hectic until I came home on Monday. Um, and then on Tuesday, the memorial, uh, it was like, to some extent, a celebration. The emotions were there, but it was more about how proud we were that we had on the African soil, on the South African soil. And really in the world, a man like him, mm. a father like him. But for me, the saddest day was when I went to view his body because it was just quite difficult to see him there, lying there, still cold. But again, it was a way of, cl of getting closure and saying goodbye to him and thanking him for everything that he'd done for the country, for Africa, for the world, but also just for me personally. So it was just a personal moment uh, mm -hmm. with him. Um, and that for me was the saddest part. Um, but of course, um, we also had to look after the guests. We had to go to Deco and so on. So it's been a mixture of pride, of gratitude that we had, we were lucky enough to share this earth with him. But at the same time, it's just um, a sense of loss as well, mm. but also a sense of recommitment to say, okay, how can we really honor him? And how can we recommit ourselves to all the beautiful things that he has taught us? And so that's, that's how it's been. The, the Deputy Chief Justice, Dikhan Moseneki, was saying that last night at FITS, that this opens up a space in South Africa to, for us all to consider what is a just society, what is a great society. Is that exploration going on in the rest of Africa? Well, um, of course, I think everybody is reflecting on Madiba's life and what it means for them, for each and every one of us, but also how Madiba has influenced us. But also we mustn't forget that he was also influenced very much by the continent in his earlier life. Uh, it was the continent that when the ANC appointed him to form Umkondo Sizwe, he had to go out. He had never been in the army or anything. He had to go out. It was the continent that gave him military training. He went to many countries. He learned, trained in Ethiopia, in Algeria, in Guinea. And he visited many countries gaining support for what was about to be a, a new phase of struggle in mm. South Africa. So I think we mustn't forget that whilst he contributed a lot to the continent and to modern day thinking, but the continent also contributed a lot to him in order for him to, to execute the struggle the way he thought and the ANC mm. thought it should be done. So people are reflecting in, in both ways what he means to them, but also what they contributed in making him who he was, who he is. Is he an inspiration 
for for those who say as Africa we, we need to stand more united um, I, I saw you recently at, at a conference about more integration more interaction more movement uh, across borders is he somebody who would have condoned that oh yes um, in fact if you look at what he said when he went to take the seat for the first time at the African Union, at the OAU then, as the president of a democratic South Africa, clearly he was very keen on integration, on unity, on development, and in, indeed in uplifting the lives of people in Africa. He said that, okay, the crown that freedom fighters wanted to put on Mother Africa's head was freedom, but the jewel on that crown should be the upliftment of its children, yeah. their happiness, their comfort. And in fact, in 1998 again, when he spoke in Ouagadougou, because that was his last summit, because he was not going to, to, to stand again. He said that what he thinks the younger generation should be doing, and amongst the things that he said was they should be accelerating the integration of Africa. They should be investing and ensuring that the young people get educated. He, talked at length about how they should be, uh, the IT uh, should be an integral part of the development of Africa. So he gave almost instructions about what needs to be done. And he was um, a great inspiration in terms of wanting to see a more powerful, a more united, a more developed, a more modernized, um, continent, but people-centered and investing a lot in, 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 in its people, in its women. I want to ask you uh, about women. You are, are the first female chair of the African Union. We know that the ANC has been incredibly progressive when, when it comes to women. But how will you uh, remember Madiba's attitude to, to women? Can you give us some insight into that? Yes, you know, um, Madiba has always... Um, has, has always seen women as an integral part of society and of the struggle as well. He had great respect for women. And I remember when the first government, in fact, before the first government was formed, if you recall, the ANC, when it went to parliament in 1994, it already had a third of its members of parliament were women. And that was under him as president of the ANC. And then he became president of the country after that election. So you can see how progressive he was even then. And of course, um, he appointed uh, women into cabinet. And we complained as women that we were too few. And he said, you know, because it was a, a government of national unity, uh, he said, it's fine, I hear you, and if I get an opportunity, I will put more women. And indeed, by the time he left, he had put additional women in cabinet uh, during that time. But it wasn't just about government, but it was about the well-being of children, of women, because he knows that if you empower the women, because he, he had so much interest in the well-being of children, but he knows that if the women are poor, if the women don't have food, the children won't have. So in order to have healthy 
teach kids, kids who are going to school, the women must have the capacity and must be empowered, must be, and also the emancipation of women as human beings. Um, I'll, I'll, when we went to Beijing, for instance, just to show how also progressive he was, when we went to Beijing, you would be surprised that the South African delegation was the only delegation in Beijing which had women negotiators. We were not accompanied by men to make sure that we do the right thing or we say the right things. He, as the president of the country, gave us carte blanche. I was leading that delegation and I was very honored that I was asked to lead the delegation. But I went to him and I said, are there any particular things? And he said, well, you know what women want. You know what we want for women. I don't have to tell you. You just do what is best for women there. So he had full confidence in, 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 in women. And, and, and we went. We didn't even notice at first. It was other delegations who said, oh, your delegation is just women, because all other delegations had men in them. He was a visionary. We, we've heard he was a, a statesman, a nation builder. But what will you remember about Nelson Mandela, the, the human man? Do you have any specific personal memories? I'll just remember him as a beautiful human being, as a person that uh, I considered as a father in many ways, as a mentor, um, as, a, as a person who made me grow into what I am today because he had confidence uh, and he gave us the space, he gave me the space to be able to do what um, I could do. But I, I'll just remember him as just Tata, who would say, would come past you and say, hello, how are you, young lady? And just, just a nice human being. Mm. Um, of course, I'll remember all the other things, but for me, he just stands out as a beautiful human being. What's, what's coming through is what a lot of people have said. He, he knew how to trust people, how to affirm people. What he was about was, was looking at the, the dignity um, of each and every person. Yes. He, he, I think he just thousands and thousands of people. And whenever you met him and talked to him about anything, you came out a better person. Mm. Uh, just his humility, his simplicity, but his also clarity of, of thought, but also his ability to listen and to also accept what other people say. And, and I think that was the great, he knew he was great, but he still was happy to listen and sometimes to change his mind based on what other people have said. And I think that's what made him even greater. My, my final question. Um... But also the other thing I remember about him, I mean, I didn't know much about Rabi and a lot of us Africans and in the townships didn't know much about Rabi. But it was just so interesting how crazy we became just because of him, about Amapogo Pogo, if you remember. And, and he just had that capacity to rally all of you and you just realize how good this is and you run with it. Can, can we just go back to that time in, in finality? Was there resistance to what he was doing, um, backing backing the Springboks, uh, can you just give us a sense of how he, he got you to that point where you say people were excited? Well, basically, Madiba, not only just the Springboks, he said, this is our country. 
just like the ANC Freedom Charter says, that whoever lives in South Africa, be, be, South Africa belongs to all who live in it. So he made us realize that, yes, I'm a Pogo Pogo, we're still a white team. It was still a white sport, but it was a South African sport. It was a, a South African team. And the South African team, white as it was, was representing South Africa in that World Cup. And therefore, they were South Africans representing us. And we had no choice but to back them because we belong together in this country. Of course, it, it's nice now to see a, a, a much more representative team, but even then, they were South Africans. And this was a South African team competing in the World Cup in South Africa. And so we, we had to just, actually, he didn't force us, he didn't force anyone, whoever, got involved and got crazy. It's not because he forced us, but just through his own behavior, he was the change that he w wanted to see. So, and through him, we also changed. Thank you, Doctor, for sharing your, your beautiful memories with us. We appreciate it. Uh, that was uh, Dr. Nkosazana Tlamini Zuma. Mm -hmm.